your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Merry meet and merry parts, bright the cheeks and warm the heart. For tread the circle thrice about to keep unwelcome spirits out. Bide within the law you must, in perfect love and perfect trust. Mind the threefold laws you should, three times bad and three times good. These eight words the read fulfill, and ye harm none, do what ye will. Welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary Meet everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron. Now, we're going to do some fun stuff tonight um, with my guest, T.J. Perkins, who is a gifted and well-respected author in the mystery, suspense, pagan fantasy genre, And Mm -hmm. she's been writing professionally for over a decade, um, practicing Wicca for the past 13 years. And as some of you may remember, she was a guest on the show, I think back in April, talking about her book, The Healthy Witch. And tonight we're going to take kind of a healthy approach um, and do something beneficial for all of us. And I don't think I've ever done a show as in-depth as what's going to happen tonight, because TJ is going to take us through... Um, a healing meditation to help relieve stress and anxiety. So get prepared. We'll tell you how to get prepared in a little while. Um, And she's going to be also talking about chakra cleansing before the meditation. And then after she's done that uh, meditation, which is, I think she said, about 15, 20 minutes long, so be prepared and get comfy, um, she'll be answering any questions or comments you might have. Um, so for those of you who aren't in the Para-X chat room for the live show and want to participate live, um, you've got plenty of time to pop over and join us at paraxradionetwork.com. And in the meantime, welcome back, TJ. This is going to be something that we all need lately, so thank you for offering. Yay! Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be back. I appreciate the time. Well, I think we're <laughs> going to appreciate your your healing um <laughs> <laughs> definitely i think uh i've come up with some really good things that i can't wait to um share with everyone and uh it it might help especially with all the craziness that has been going on with 2020 you know and um just try to practice it and and even after tonight you know, uh, your your listeners might even feel like they could take it to the next level or simplify it even more or do what I'm going to um, pass on, um, it, you know, something that, that works for them and, and, and do it maybe a slight bit different. And it doesn't matter because we are all magical beings in one form or fashion. And whatever it is that you do, it will definitely benefit all of you. It will, and and not just all of us, um, but um, we have someone in the chat room, Summer Rain, and she just posted, she said, my husband, baby, and fur babies are all listening with her tonight. Oh, yay! So glad to have you with us. (laughs) So they're all, even the fur babies are going to take advantage of this, and it probably will, just by, you know, hearing the voice and the meditation, um, they can pick Mm -hmm. up on the vibes because they're very intuitive, more so than we give them credit for sometimes. Yeah, and then, you know, um, I I have some very dear witch friends that tell me that when they meditate, if they can get their cats or their dogs to lay really close to them so they can can stroke the fur or just put their hands on them and feel them purring, I mean, all of that resonates deep within your own heart and your soul. And, And there's that wonderful connection with your fur babies. You know, so that's that's a really important aspect of meditation as well and self healing. Yeah, and it's all it's all energy in a sense, and mm-hmm. um, that's what the world is made up of. And so, 
whether you're an animal or a reptile or I'm well, a reptile is an animal. If you're human <laughs> or otherwise, let me rephrase that. If you're human or otherwise, <laughs> you can still benefit from it because it, it's the energy that's going through you. Even if they don't understand the words verbatim, mm-hmm. they pick up the intent in the energy. Oh, yeah. Okay? So that that works just as well. So um, before we start talking about a couple of other things, um, what should those who are listening and want to participate need to do to get themselves ready? Um, Well, when we take our take our break, we you know definitely make sure you go to the bathroom and you you're in some comfy clothes and you can either sit or prop yourself up on the bed or just lay down you know like in corpse pose. If you do yoga, a lot of people know what that is. You're just laying flat with your arms down, whatever is comfortable. Just get comfy and, um, you know, maybe have something to sip on, some water, whatever next to you in case you get parched. But um, that's pretty much all you need to do. And try your best not to think about what you have to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> or later tonight, yeah. Or um, later tonight, yeah. Yeah, dinner or something like that, yeah. And mm-hmm. and. You know, so people always say, well, I can't meditate because I can't clear my mind. Mm, And they can't clear their mind because I think they're taking too much time trying to think how to clear their mind, right? I actually think a lot of people are clairvoyant and they don't realize it. And that's why they can't clear their mind. They actually have to learn to shield and ground. And there's very easy shielding techniques that you could find online. Um, One of them is a... um, a tower of light where you just envision a brilliant, bright white light um, just coming down and it comes down to your the crown of your head and it just kind of like rains down all the way around you and it forms this brilliant white bubble. And it's so brilliant, bright, and you're seeing this in your mind. And it, it helps to block out all that chatter in your head. And, you know, you, you hold it there for as long as you, as you possibly can. And, um, and then allow yourself to meditate, and then the white light can very slowly fade away while you start to meditate. That's just a little technique that I had to use when I first started years ago, uh, you know, practicing Wicca and, you know, trying to, you know, be a magician and, you know, do all kinds of magic is that you've got to quiet your mind and focus because if not, mm-hmm. then your thoughts are all over the place and then, you know, your magic's just going to go everywhere and, mm-hmm. you, know, <laughs> you know. Nothing worse than scattered magic because I would need I know. to be on the fallout of somebody's, you know. <laughs> you just <laughs> I know, right? Step back and be careful. Yeah, so, <laughs> all right, so everybody that, that and and even if, I, this is could correct me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> but mm-hmm. even if there are people listening saying, "Well, I don't really want to go through all that, but I will still listen," um, mm-hmm. I, they will still have some advantage from that, won't they? Oh yeah, oh definitely, oh yeah, you will because you're thinking about it, you're hearing mm-hmm. it, it's going into your subconscious. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely, you you will. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do that in a little while but um we you know with the meditation it's probably better to do it right after the break because then we have mm-hmm. no rushing time to to worry about but in the meantime n- normally at the second half we would talk about what you're up to and what you're doing and, and what are you working on and everything so we're going to kind of do it a little bit backwards today um okay. we're going to kind of talk about some of the projects that you're working on which sound Mm -hmm. really, really interesting. And um, then before the break, you're going to talk about chakra cleansing. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, we'll jump right into it. So, um, like I said, there are a couple of things that you've got going on that interest me. Um, So the first thing I want you to talk about is your new Wicca teaching series. What's that all about? Oh, yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Um, my uh, publisher had called me uh, last year, uh, end of last year, and said, hey, you know, are you working on something new? And I'm like, dude, I just finished, like, The Healthy Witch, and we launched it. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to take a break. And he's like, no, is there anything, anything at all that you've been thinking about doing? And I said, yes. 
I would love to write, and I started off by saying a book, write a book about Wicca, traditional Wicca for ages 8 through 12. Because everyone knows that, you know, I my very first Wicca teaching book for ages 0 to 6 was Four Little Witches. And it won the Cover Visionary Arts Award in 2016. It's got a whole bunch of five-star reviews, and people just absolutely love it, and the children love it. And it teaches about the elements and the New Age mindset without shoving religion down a child's throat. And I'm like, well, I want to go to the next level. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so excited about this because there is actually um, a lot of people asking for books for their child within that age age range. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm kind of like, well, you know, I'm also kind of concerned because I know when Silver Raven Wolf put out her teen book, she was blasted. And mm-hmm. she was blasted by pagans and Wiccans and all witches. And, and of course, you know, uh, the mundane and, you know, Christians and Catholics, of course, mm-hmm. just, everyone just had a fit over this book. Some people loved it. Other people did not. And I'm like, well, let me take a slightly different approach. So I decided that I'm doing a three-book series, and it's going to be called So You Want to Be a Witch. Plain and simple, and each one's going to be volume one, volume two, volume three. And start off at volume one. I'm going to let kids know this is traditional. This is you have to work at this. Now, this is not any that silly stuff that you see on TV. It's not that. This is the real thing. This is earth-based. And I'm going to run them through each of the elements. And there, there's, I have like coloring pictures. I have, you know, word searches and word scrambles and match things. I've got cool projects where they can actually learn to make their own pentacle and, and, um, they can actually learn to make a wand and that they're, you know, they can go and get, uh, some incense or some candles or whatever and, and to keep their, their parent or guardian or grandparent, whoever's raising them, whoever they live with, to keep that adult figure involved and do things with their permission and for the adults to kind of, you know, oversee what they're doing. Because you guys say these are kids and and to, to instill in them from the very first page, you are not the kind of witch that is going to try to have power over others. You're not the kind of witch that is going to try to do spells on someone else. So that's, you know, very, very important for me to get that across. And I repeat it throughout all the books. And um, I start them off, and I also get them to connect with um, the elemental kings. And I'll teach them how to meditate, which I've done that. I We go through the witch's pyramid. And, you know, I, I've gone through all that. And I don't talk down to them. I try to talk to them as like, you know, like a buddy, like, hey, here it is. This is cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it just as if I'm sitting there talking to them, to relating to them, you know. And, and I think that is so important. Uh, book one is finished. And I actually had um, a dear, dear friend of mine um, who's a, a witch and uh, her daughter, who is 22, both of them went through it and they edited it and they pointed out where, you know, maybe you should say this or instead of that, or maybe this needs to be worded differently here. And it was fantastic feedback. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that's all I've done. Book two is um, a little more than halfway finished. And book three, I've got, I've got the, the bones started on that. Mm-hmm. So I've already, I've already uh, given it to the publisher. So I'm waiting for, you know, response, whether he likes it or what, I've, what I'm doing, so he can see where I'm going with it. Right. Well, it sounds like you're going in a different direction as, as some and more um, user-friendly in a sense. Yeah. It's, a, you know, coloring and creativity is, is magic also, and children have fantastic imaginations, and they, you know, visualize, and they have imaginary friends, and they sit and play with their dolls and or, you know, plastic farm animals or cars and trucks, you know, and they have these great big visions in their mind. It's like that will be lost the older they get and they get into high school and they're too worried about, you know, boys or, or girls or texting and how I look and selfies and then they get more into the 
grown, mundane world, and everything gets all muddied. And it's like if you can kind of tap into that and remind them, you know, you are the ones that are going to continue to, you know, move our our world and our society forward with this positive energy that all of us hold within us. Learn it now, hold it within you, and don't forget it. You know, mm-hmm. and even if they get older and are so wrapped up in their jobs and, and stuff, they'll, they will remember these little things. And maybe when they get home from work or on the weekends, at least once or twice a week, they might still just sit and meditate or, you know, and do, do something to, you know, reach out to whatever deity it is that they like, you know, that they feel connected to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, we I, I mentioned this the other day we were kind of talking and um, about this subject because it is it can be controversial and I'm always going to be the devil's advocate just because that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. um, but we were talking about the fact that maybe kids would want the book, but parents would not want them to have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm thinking marketing is going to be a challenge because oh, you, yeah. you can't exactly – well, you can. I mean, you can go directly to the kids, but it's the parents that are going to buy the book. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's like there should right. be – this is, sounds like a joke, but there should be a primer that goes along with it to the parent. Because if they're willing to to jump in with both feet and let their kids do it or at least get explained what it's all about, maybe some reluctant parents would change their mind. Mm-hmm. It, it's just well, – it- yeah, go ahead. I was actually thinking, I'm sorry, um, I was actually thinking, you know, the ones who would buy the book for their children are the ones that, like my publisher said, are seeking for mm-hmm. books like this for their child. Right. But again, you're going to have the child that, that is, you know, Wiccan or Pagan or Heathen, they've got this book, they want to, you know, explore um, earth magic, and they show it to a friend. Mm-hmm. Well, that friend, you know, that family could be Christian or Catholic or whatever. And then the mother, she's like, well, can I borrow the book? Mom might find it and go, oh, my God, mm-hmm. and just flip out. Right. Yeah. So, of course, and then instantly, oh, who's this author? T.J. Perkins. Oh, eh, let, let me, I'm going to call and tell everybody about this girl. You know, so. <laughs> Tar and um, feathers, yeah. And I'm going to say, you know what? Do it because the more attention you give to me, the more attention you're going to give to the books. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And then, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's going to happen, and I'm going to get blasted also. But you know, maybe it won't be so bad. So you know, we'll just see. And maybe sales won't be so great the first year, and then all of a sudden, once you know the pagan and Wiccan and heathen community sees what I'm really doing and go, oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, this is easy. I can do this with my child. Oh, okay. Then maybe sales will take off. Who knows? I have a very dear friend of mine who is um, a shamanic teacher, and she has a 10-year-old daughter who's um, just, she's really open-minded about anything and everything because of her mom. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked her when I wrote, I had the first book, like, partially done. I had some stuff together and I said, Hey, can I email this to you? Can you and your daughter, let your daughter do the work and see and tell me what she likes and what she doesn't like about it. And she really loved it. And she gave me some fantastic feedback. And this girl is 10 years old and Uh she's, she's an old soul. She really is. And she's very, very smart for her age. And uh, she's my target audience, and it was it was absolutely perfect. And her mom does Reiki and all kinds of shamanic healing and connecting, and she um, reads cards and stuff like that. So she's not real privy to a whole lot of Wicca stuff, but believe it or not, she is doing a lot of witchy stuff that she doesn't realize. Mm-hmm. So she's learning from me. I'm learning from her. And she was doing the, the book along with her daughter. Mm-hmm. And um, both of them, you know, we were on a Facebook chat thing together. And both of them were just like, this is really cool stuff. This is really, really good. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm like, okay, well, that's good feedback from a parent with a child who wants to know about this stuff. Right. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, and as long as everybody's on board, you know, it, it can turn into a very good thing. But again, mm-hmm. see, that's the problem because yep. we've all gone through this. Um, we we kind of wear our pentacles under our shirts, um, you know. Because I don't. When, well, I don't either, <laughs> but, you know, because when you're standing in a grocery line and somebody tries to cut in and, and you – clear your throat and they look at you and they see the pentagram they tiptoe away which is really good um, I know <laughs> yeah it works it works in several different ways but it's true I mean a lot of people will not come out of the broom closet because mm. they practice in silence they're afraid to say anything about it mm-hmm. and that's always been a problem that we aren't we don't necessarily feel free to express who we are to people because you just don't know what they're going to do. And it took a very long Mm -hmm. time for for the owner of Para X at that time years ago to convince me to do a show because that just for that reason, you know, it's okay. I'm going to be out in the open. I'm going to get hate mail. I'm going to, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And so, yeah, I mean, if I don't know that there's ever going to be a day when we can just freely be who we are. And not have mm-hmm. to worry about it. But in the meantime, by the same token, it's a kind of a important thing to let people feel that maybe they can say something or be themselves without having to worry. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I just recently started a Facebook group called Three Owls in a Basket. And um, I don't post a whole lot just yet, but uh, I am posting some things and um what I'm trying to do is since I'm learning so much about the magical systems of shamanism and Hinduism and Buddhism, I thought it was kind of cool to take some of that stuff, um, you know, like mantras, the different kinds of mantras and things and mix them with Wicca. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, why should there be just one thing? You know, there's so many different things. And let's just kind of like marry it together because when the healthy witch came out and I told you this was going to happen and it did, I Hmm. had people like witches say, well, I'm a witch and I don't believe in this and that's stupid. And I don't, I don't believe in a goddess. I'm, I'm just a witch. And I'm just like, you know, and I went, I go back over and I read these things from people and I try to think, well, where is their head when they're saying these things, these nasty things about, you know, what my work is. And I'm just thinking, you know what, why are we as, as magical beings doing what all the other religions are doing? We're segregating our, our magical systems, you know, and when we're more powerful together, Mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't mean that we have to marry all these different things together to where there's just one big gigantic belief system. No, have your separate belief system, but be open-minded enough to know that, you know, just because you're a witch, you can, you know, do um, uh, mantras and chants from, from India. And mm-hmm. you can, you know, practice Zen and, and Buddhism and still call in the goddess and the god or, you know, anybody, whoever you feel connected to. There are witches who are connected to the Egyptian deities. Mm-hmm. You yep. know what? That's perfectly fine, but yet, oh, that uh, that's not what I am. I'm I'm this. Right? Mm-hmm. Don't put a label on it. Who cares? You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's and what I'm sort of doing. You know, I'm trying. I'm getting there. I'm getting my toes wet with it. Well, good. You have to because, you know, it's one of these things that I've always thought paganism was was lovely and and the way I practice and everything because we embrace everybody else's religion. We don't say that everything else is bad, you know, do what we do. Mm -hmm. We welcome them. I mean, I've said this before. I know Jewish witches. I know Christian Druids, Mm -hmm. you know, across the board. And so, you know, we're all one and we all practice slightly different. But if everybody would just kind of drop the labels, as you said, and and just kind Mm -hmm. of respect everybody else doing what they're doing, as long as they're not serial killers. um, Exactly. You know, then then we'll just be fine. All right. So we've got like uh, five minutes before the break so uh, let's yes. let's talk about the chakras and um yes. fill in so i wanted to do. go into it whoever whoever might have gotten a hold of my book the healthy witch on um page 82 i have a thing about chakra cleansing 
So, you know, I take everything from like the root chakra all the way up to the crown chakra. And I have a list of different um, crystals that you could use. Uh, you know, you could use one crystal for the root or and another crystal for the chakra. I just did like a whole list of samples that somebody could pick and choose from. But if you don't have any, that's fine. Use just a, a clear crystal quartz. The like old quartz crystal, everybody's got those mm-hmm. good, you know. So then what I've learned to do, I've been practicing this for a couple of days in a row, and, it, <laughs> and uh, it's been actually kind of cool. So what I've done is uh, I sit, like you're going to meditate, and you can sit with your legs straight out, but it's basically best to do this sitting if you can. And then I start concentrating on the root chakra, and then I kind of just imagine I'm grabbing the darkness, anything dark, like the negativity, whatever you want to call it, your stress or whatever, you grab it and you just kind of breathe in and then you hold it. And we're going to hold it right there at your sacral. Okay. And you just kind of release a little bit of breath and then you just pull it up again. And now you're holding it at your solar plexus, which is really hard. And because everything really sits at our solar plex in our heart area. And then you pull it up again and you're going to hold it at your at your um, heart, and then just release a little, just a little bit of breath. So you're like you're building up your your um, your breath in your uh, lungs, and you pull it up some more. And you're going to hold it at your throat, and then again, we're pulling all that negative. We're going to we're like you're grabbing it, and you're just pulling it up. It's like it's like do you ever like get a glob of hair in the drain and you're just pulling it <laughs> and you're pull and you're pulling all that muck and nasty. And it's like, Ugh, that's what we're doing. We're going to pull it up. And then finally, when you pull it up to your crown and then you're going to go oh, and you release it and you're just going to let it go up into the air. And then normally what I say, anybody can say whatever you want. I don't care. But normally I'll, I'll just say, you know, goddess, please take all of this negativity or, you know, all this dark energy and transmute it into something that's good and healing for the earth. And then you just rest and just, and then let your breath go back to normal. And you take like four nice, good breaths. doesn't have to be deep breaths, just normal. And you just kind of just let it all go. And you're letting it go. And then the first time I did it, I was kind of like, huh, that's interesting. And then I, I just said, oh, let me do it again the next day when I got home from work because work has been like, er, lately. And <laughs> I, was, I felt even better. I was like, oh, I think I'm on to something. I did it the third day and I was like, yes. And I got it all done right before Mercury went retrograde. And I was like, yes, score. <laughs> <Again. laughs> but, it, but it worked out. And, and um, actually, it made me feel really good. And I was thinking, oh, I can't wait to tell everybody about this. Good. So I'd I like love that. everyone to give that a shot and see if it works for you. All right. Thanks. Now we've got two minutes before the break, and there's a question in the chat room from Summer Rain, mm-hmm. and she says, why do you feel people put such a big emphasis on a difference between light workers and witches? Oh, my God. I have no idea what's going on in people's heads. I, I wish <laughs> – I, I mean, I'm thinking almost you – know, and it could be wrong. I'm thinking some people might – um have some sort of mental hierarchy going on inside them. You know, it's, I don't, I don't understand why, um, you know, I'm not this, I'm that. And it could just be um, like society dictating to them in some sort of way, sort of like how society dictates to us by a certain age, we should be married. And by a certain age, we should be making this much. And by a certain age, we should have a home and, you know, 2.0 2.0 kids or whatever and it's like well no you don't you, that stuff comes when you are ready and when the universe well wants to bring it to you you know mm-hmm. and so i i almost think it might have something to do with um a society and and some sort of a, i don't know emotional or mental hierarchy that are people are trying to to put in place for themselves you know, like to make them better than the next person. I, I have no idea. Well, as you're but talking, and I go ahead, finish that. Go, I'm sorry. I'll, no, we're no, good. That's go good. ahead. You're good. <laughs> no, you go right. ahead. 
I love tap dancing around this. Um, <laughs> when two of us are talking at the same time, it's really fun. No, I, I just wanted to say that as you're talking, and I'm looking at the question in the chat room, and I'm seeing light workers and witches. And the thing that came to my mind, which may be crazy too, is that light workers are looked upon as white people. I mean, white in the sense of light, as opposed mm-hmm. to witches that are looked at in most cases in the mainstream as dark Mm -hmm. so light kind of look at i look excuse me let me just interrupt one second i look at light workers as being light elves and then dark elves and i sort of look at the elvish kind of magic in that kind of way Mm -hmm. because you have dark energy is, is powerful and it's great and it doesn't have to be dark energy that's evil because dark elves um are full of creativity you know, mm-hmm. they're the ones who like to hide underneath the basement steps and stuff. And, and you can feel that eeriness when you go down the basement. You just want to jump over those last couple of stairs. <laughs> and it, that's dark That's dark elf energy. And the yeah. light elves are sort of like the Legolas kind of elves, you know, mm-hmm. um, in the forest and all. But I know a light, I don't know, light workers and, and, and the dark dark workers. So that might just be, you know, I, I am good, good and evil. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's. That's that whole thing that's been going on forever and ever, you know, yeah. good and evil. Well, the light workers yeah. are holy and the witches are, you know, whatever in their minds. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're we're going to take a commercial break. Um, everybody get comfortable if you're not already, because when we come back, we will start the meditation. So we'll be right back. Yay. Okay. Don't go away. There's more Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks right after these important messages. From Haunted Road Media comes an exciting new novel by author Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Two lost souls ripped apart by murder in another century find each other again in the present only to discover that the murderer has followed them through time. Can their love save them or will history repeat itself? Find out in this captivating new novel by Marla Brooks. Soul Connection, a deadly obsession. Available now on Amazon.com and at BarnesandNoble.com. You've no doubt heard of Tango and Cash, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Perhaps it takes two to tango. Well, now, on the first and third Thursdays of each month, there's a show called Tango and Friends at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Para-X Radio Network with your host, Bruce Tango. And yes, there will be at least two to tango on each episode, sometimes even more. There's going to be lots of topics and lots of guests you'll all know and lots of support. Prizes. Tango and Friends, every first and third Thursday of the month at 8 p.m. right here on the Para-X Radio Network. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening into Stirring the Cauldron. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up if you don't already know about the free weekly Witches Oracle Deck readings that I post on my website every Monday. Now let me answer the age-old question before you ask it, which is, well how do I know it's for me? And the answer is pretty simple. If you weren't meant to see it, you wouldn't know it was there. So if you're curious about what the week has in store for you, pop on over to MarlaBrooks.com every Monday and scroll down on the homepage, and there it will be. Welcome back to Stirring the Cauldron. Once again, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Okay, we are back, and I think we're about ready to begin the meditation. Yep. So um, I'm going to hand you the mic, so to speak, and, and okay. it's all yours. <laughs> all righty, here we go, everybody. So I'm actually going to take a meditation out of a book that I discovered years ago. So this is not something that I wrote. I, just, I can't claim this. This is out of a book called Magical Pathworking, and it's Techniques of Active Imagination, and the author is Nick Farrell, F-A-R-R-E-L-L. So if, um, you know, you want to get the book, you can find it on Amazon, I I assume. Okay, so there is a um, meditation that he did that's in the book, but I kind of rewrote it to where things were in a different order. 
because it, it made more sense to me to do it the way I did it. But it is still his work. Okay, so in the book, there is a meditation where you are going to build your own inner kingdom. So this is extremely important with all the anxiety and stress that a lot of people feel. You build your own inner kingdom. Now, this does not mean, oh, I'm going to like hide within myself and hide from the world. No, no, no. This is all in your mind, and but you're going to find that Whatever you can do in your kingdom inside will actually affect what happens in your life. It's very interesting. So let me digress. There is a meditation called Hall of the Hero. Now I want you guys to imagine this hall. It's a big oval-shaped hallway. Uh, not a hallway. It's a hall. It's like a banquet hall. It's um, a, like a big medieval hall. Okay, so you're standing at the one end of the oval, and at the other end of the oval is a throne with chairs. On the right-hand side of this big room is three doors, and on the left side is three doors. There are big tables for feasting and a gigantic fireplace or hearth. There's a throne with a chair on either side, and in front of the throne is a table with a sword. That's your sword. This is what you use to rule your kingdom. On the one chair, it's a seat for your significant other or your partner, and the other chair is for um, a gentleman named Blaze, and Blaze is a bard and a grand magician, and he will give you advice throughout your meditations, okay? Um, So now that you have an idea of what the room looks like, now Blaze's room actually sits at the very far end of this oval-shaped room, okay? Your hall. The end where you're standing, there's a door that leads out, and there is a, a giant wall, stone wall, that goes around your kingdom. And there is a ladder that leads up to um, a watchtower. And there's also a magical well, okay, that you can look into. So everybody, I want you to take a deep breath and take it in. And then release. Let it all out. And then breathe in. And then release. And then again, once more in. And let it out. You see yourself sitting comfortable in this meditation. A white mist rises up around you and begins to swirl. The mist thickens and it moves from you to in front of you. And it swirls into a vortex. You're going to stand and leave your body and you're going to step through. As the mist clears, You are looking at a roaring fire. Surrounding the fire are wooden tables and chairs. Behind this table is a large chair. You are a chair. You are the chieftain. On the table is your sword. Take a good look at it. What does it look like? With this sword, you rule your tribe and territory. On the right of your big chair is one for the magician Blaze. And on the other, is one for your partner. Around the walls are shields hanging.
you notice the three doors on the right and three doors on the left. And behind you is the doorway that leads to a courtyard with a deep well. And you know that in that courtyard is enclosed by a stockade wall. And next to it is the well. You walk over to the well and you look in. Are the waters calm? Are they dark? Are they clear? What do you see? Now climb the ladder. When you get to the top, walk the perimeter of the stockade and notice if there are any holes in the wall or have parts of the wall been destroyed or crumbling by a poor state of repair. If there are, these indicate a weakness in your aura. It's important to find out what caused the weaknesses. Call down and ask one of the villagers what they may know. Listen to what they tell you. Now you must gather together a group of woodworkers and laborers to fix the holes you discovered. Some will ask for payment in kind, and some might ask for money. Listen closely to what they say. What the workers ask for in payment will give you a clue as to how the problem can be fixed deep within your psyche. It's important to pay attention to the walls that surround your village. These represent the ability of your lifestyle to hold its own against the problems of the outside world. These walls should be strong, but also flexible, so it can expand, contract, or even be moved. Your lifestyle should be able to hold its own shape, but you should never be afraid to change it. Once you are satisfied as to the progress of your workers, head back down the ladder and go inside your grand hall once again. You pause and observe the doors to the three rooms on the left side And now observe the three rooms on the right side of the hall. Are any of the doors open or closed? Are there weapons lying about? Are there warriors hanging out in your great hall? Observe how the warriors behave. Observe which of the rooms, doors are open or closed. Now decide which room you sleep in. Once you are satisfied, you walk towards your chair and you notice the white mist appears again. Once it's thick and white and swirling, you will step through. 
You see yourself sitting in meditation and you join your body. Release breath. Now take one deep breath in and let it all out. Feel yourself calm. And when you're ready, you will open your eyes. Now I'm going to explain a few things to you about what you've seen and heard. So, if any of you might have seen Blaze, if he was walking around, he might have come up and said something to you. So remember, he is your guide, and he helps you to arrive at the best decisions for your land if you ask him for any, or he might just show up and walk up to you and whisper something in your ear. Okay, so where's my notes here? I'm telling everybody. The well outside represents your unconsciousness. In times of stress, the waters will seem troubled. In other times, you'll be able to use the well's water to see into the future. So you can use this meditation again and build on it and go even further with it on your own. And I want to tell you to notice in which room that you sleep. So I'm going to tell you the rooms. The rooms on your right, close to your chair, is Temple of the God. Then the middle one is the Treasury. And then the one closest to the door is your, your partner's bedroom. And then the rooms on your left, the one close to your chair is Temple of the Goddess. Then the middle one is the Armory. And then one below that is the Library. So for you to determine which room you sleep in, it says a lot about your your orientation. So let's say if you sleep in the library, you might be more logic, logical and rational thinking. Um, if you're in the armory, you could feel that you're on the defense or aggressive. If you select either the goddesses or the gods room, it could indicate a paternal or maternalistic phase in your life. Um, and then you'll notice that where you sleep will change from time to time when you uh, revisit this meditation. Um, when you are experiencing a period of conflict in your life, the armory door will be open with different types of weapons or armor ready. Okay. Um, if there's a sword there, it means that you'll have to uh, fight with your adversaries like close up. Um, if there's a spear, it means that you'll have to fight fending off your opponents but not becoming too closely involved. And um, if there's a bow and arrow, then that means that you're going to fight uh, the conflict from a distance. So you'll have to kind of think of this as what did you see, what's going on in my life, and how would I handle that situation or how should I handle this situation now in modern times and not medieval times because, of course, we're not going to run around with a sword or a spear uh, into work to deal with somebody who's totally on your nerves. Um, so people who also enter your hall are almost universally aspects of your personality. So let's just say there's an arrogant warrior who likes to, you know, be mouthy and is insisted on making a conflict. So you have to figure out how you need to bring that person in line because you are the chieftain. Um, so then you should also check to see how the warriors respond to your decisions. You're not going to make everybody happy, and you know that. Um, but Blaze can always show up and offer you suggestions on, you know, a better way to resolve a conflict. Um, let's see here. 
So you're going to find, it's one thing to keep in mind, all right, things that change in your hall will gradually change in your own personality. When your own personality starts to change, things all around you in your outside world begin to change. And when I first got into this years ago, I was like, yeah, right. But it's so true. So, and it's very interesting. So as you guys did this meditation, I hope that you kind of took mental notes. And remember, you can do this again. So when, you're, and when there are holes in your stockade, in your wall, if the wall has been, let's just say, your villager said that the hole was knocked down because of a giant. Um, an example in the book was that there was a woman who was in an abusive relationship. And every time she did the meditation, the villager said, oh, it's easier just to leave that big gap in the wall because the giant just comes through knocking everything down every time, every day. So once she began to stand up to her abuser and make plans to leave, and actually separated her from the situation as she was going through doing those steps. She was still doing the meditation. Her villagers were actually um, patching up that big gap in the wall. And so you can see the correlation between the two. So I've, I always thought that that short story was like a really good example. Um, so, that's it for the meditation, and I feel that we should still have enough time for questions and answers. How do you feel about that, Marla? There's one that came in um, from Kat, okay. and she says, what's it mean if the water in the well is wavy and you can't see? Okay, if it's wavy, okay, so that means that there's uh, turmoil. There's something going on in your life that's kind of bothering you, and you can't see, you can't figure it out because the water's too dark for you to see into. Um, I, kind of, I kind of look at, at the water like you do with dream interpretation. Um, when the water is dark or muddy or it's really rough, um, there is turbulence of some sort in your life. So this well, remember, this is your unconsciousness. And <clears throat> you... You can actually see the future in this magic well um, when you can get things calmed down. So there's something going on. There is something troubling you right now. You can't put your finger on it, but there's something bothering you. So therefore, the well is telling you this. Um, And how was her wall? How did the wall look? Intact. Yeah. Okay, her wall was intact. Okay, so did her villagers seem happy and prosperous? That we don't know. Okay, so it's like you have to kind of, there's something, there's something going on. There's Mm -hmm. something that that she's not quite, she's not quite happy about something, but she can't Mm -hmm. figure out what it is or why. Um, Don't let depression or any type of loneliness get to you, you could be lonely even if you're with someone, you know. So um, maybe take on a project, maybe force yourself to do yoga or stretch or work out or something to try to work off any type of anxiety that's going on. Oh, she just said that the villagers seemed calm. The villagers seemed calm. Okay, so that's good. Maybe have a, uh, a festival. Maybe everybody should have a festival next change, time. <laughs> change the mood or something. Yeah, yeah and, change the mood. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, can, we got like three minutes. But um, okay. I just, you know, we're putting the podcast up. People can listen to it. And if you listen, the more you listen to it, the more it's in your head. You won't have to follow that meditation from the podcast it'll be in your right. head you'll know right. what to do you'll know where to go you know you you already stuck in your mind there's the well there's the wall there's blaze there's the villagers and 
There's the rooms. Don't forget and the, the rooms. rooms. Yeah, that's important. Um, mm-hmm. And so once that's in, all you're going to have to do is just sit back and relax and watch the story unfold. Because your subconscious is taking over and it'll be so much easier and it's a quick way to meditate without having to worry about clearing your mind and, you know, all this stuff that we talked about before. So Mm -hmm. just acquaint yourself with the basics of this meditation that you did today and do it a few more times and it'll be just kind of like, you know, something that you do just because you want to feel better or, or need to calm down or something. So I think I think that's really important. So I'll have this up um, on my website tomorrow on the Stirring the Cauldron Para X YouTube channel and on Podomatic, and I'll post it uh, po- post podcast on my Facebook page too. So I mean, anywhere you want to find it, it's on iTunes. Get it and just use the second half of the show as kind of like the learning curve and let your imagination take over too. Um, it will, it will kind of just click into gear and yeah, I think that's great. So I uh, yep. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yes, for, um, absolutely for doing this. I mean, it's, it's something in, and we've done people doing guided meditations in five minutes, but never, you know, something quite this, um, in depth. So really, really much appreciated. Now where can people find yes. you if they want you? Oh, they and can find me on stuff. Yes, well they can they can find my books on Amazon. So just look up T J Perkins author and all of my books should come up, including my author page. Um they can um find me on Facebook, T J Perkins, and also my group is Three Owls in a Basket. Why? I don't know. I was just told to use that. The goddess just told me. <laughs> That's cute, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm all over the place. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, Goodreads, and uh, I hope you guys check out my book, um, The Healthy Witch. And actually, I start uh, the healthiness uh, and the healing. The whole year of healing actually begins on Yule. So we're getting close. Yes, we are. Yes. All right. <laughs> Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all absolutely um, for all of you listening in. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. Good night. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Please join us again next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited.